Hey there friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarask, and I've got a bit of a weird concept to share with you. It involves equating training horses with talking to people. <laughs> so recently I've moved to a different facility where I've been kind of given the awesome opportunity to work with a couple of horses. and. I've been able to see them transform within the past two weeks. I had one horse that was very scared and timid and terrified when I first started working with him. And over the past two weeks, I've been able to kind of build up a bond with this guy and get him to see that I'm not out to get him or out to hurt him. And me and him have kind of, he's cute. He's, he's a cool guy. He's a little clip of the two of us kind of working together a little bit and finally meshing together. His name is Rodeo. He's a cool guy. I've been working with him and I've been working with another horse who is very dominant and most certainly was like the leader of his herd at one point and I had to step in and tell him, no, you're not in charge. You've got to listen to me. And he wasn't very thrilled about that and he would, you know, throw his head, he'd be pawing, he'd be screaming for his friends and stuff like that and I had to get his attention back on me and get him to focus on me. And it was really cool seeing the progress over the past two weeks on how that all kind of unfolded. I always think to myself that people should either ride horses, learn to work with horses, lose weight, or train a dog. Because all of these things take time and they all progress at their own time. When you're trying to lose weight, you have a period in between where you can't see any progress. And the same thing kind of goes for horses and for the most part kind of training dogs too. You have to put effort into something in order to see a result. It's not instant gratification. It takes time. One of my favorite analogies, I'm not entirely sure who came up with this analogy, but especially for losing weight, this analogy is awesome. It's the paper towel uh, analogy. You show up every single day, pull a piece of paper towel, you do it for, you know, a couple of days, you don't really see a difference in the paper towel, it's still big and, you know, nothing changes. But then over time, you start to notice it getting smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually there are no more paper towels. Same thing with losing weight and kind of the same thing with working with horses. Over time, you might need to put in a little bit more effort. Sometimes a concept that you worked with a horse the day before tends to not stick overnight, so you've got to go back and rework that concept, and then maybe a couple of days later, you'll sometimes see a result, or sometimes you'll see a result instantly, it depends. But regardless, it takes patience. It takes patience, and it takes a certain kind of timing and finesse to work with horses. And I had a moment on Friday where I was working with my trainer and I was really excited because I wanted to show her some of the stuff that I had been doing with with Rodeo and to say hey like he's a really smart horse I want to teach him some fun tricks and things what can I do with him and I literally did the first couple of things like didn't even get into like the good stuff and she said all right stop I, I pretty much can see everything that I need to I, I see everything that I need to see and she said that while your movement isn't necessarily big in nature where I'm not like throwing my arms and flailing all over the place, I'm still getting after him super quickly. She said, take your body language and just be quieter with it. You don't have to be as loud. And I kind of like was taken aback. I was like, I thought I was being so gentle, but the way that I was sending him out is I was pointing, I was pointing and I was kind of directing with, we've got a, I've got a, a little whip that I have too that I don't hit him with. I just kind of guide him. It's like an extension of my arm pretty much. But she said, all you have to do is start off small, just point your finger. And if he doesn't move, just encourage, just lift the other hand a little bit and just encourage him to go. He'll move. And sure enough, of course he did. I didn't need to do all the things in a big way and in a big manner to get him to move. And after that, me and her went into the barn and we talked for, for quite some time. I was talking to her about how 
other people respond to me in my life. I'm very much so an analytical person and I overthink everything, every move that I make. I have to see if I can figure out what's going to happen next. And I know that that's not healthy, but that's just growing up the way that I grew up. That's just the way that I am. I can't make mistakes. If I make a mistake, I might get hurt and I might die. Obviously, that's not my reality at this moment. It's not going to happen, but it's a program that's been installed in my head that I'm working every single day, every single second to get rid of. But I was talking to her about overthinking the way that people respond to me and what I say. And she kind of changed her, she changed her answer to say, practice on the horses, practice how you show up on the horses, practice the lightness that you use the same lightness that you use on the horses. And it took me a little bit to kind of understand what she meant. Like it had to process in my mind a little bit as it usually does when I talk to her. I usually text her the next day or the day after and I'm like, oh my God, I just had this big profound download. I know what you meant now. I understand it. And she's usually like, I'm happy for you. Good for you. <laughs> she's so great. But yesterday I had Rodeo out and I was working with him and I thought to myself, how can I show up? How can I practice this concept? How can I practice this lightness? How would I treat this situation as if I was interacting with a human? Not to say that horses and humans are the same, but how in my mind I compare that. So I took a deep breath. I grounded myself to make sure that I wasn't too in my head and just thinking of a million and one other things. And I was really light with this horse and to get him to go, I just pointed and he went and I was like, okay, that was really easy. Took a step back, he turned in towards me, pointed the other way, he went the other way. I asked him to move just so horses got four legs, front legs and the back legs. I pointed like this just to move his front legs and he moved his front legs over. I looked towards his back and I pointed at his back legs. He moved his back legs over. And I thought to myself, you know, I've only been working with this horse for a couple of weeks. Like, I'm sure these concepts stick, but I need to refine how I'm asking him to do it. And I need to stop demanding him to do things. I'm going to be asking him to do things instead. So I had my aha moments on how I can then relate that to talking with and working with humans instead of needing to get big and needing to throw my energy all over the place in order to be heard or in order to get my point across, I can be firm and say what it is that I'm trying to say or ask what it is that I'm trying to ask in just the lightest way possible and see how the people respond. See, and just see how people respond. One of my favorite concepts with horses and people that I absolutely love that kind of cracks me up if a horse is kind of throwing a temper tantrum, they're, you know, we let them run around in this thing called a round pen and they run around, they get all their bucks and kicks out and they snort and they're just like, oh my God, I'm afraid of everything. And they just, they do their thing. They'll turn to come into us to be like, hey, I want to be in your space now. I want to be a part of your herd. Most times we'll just be like, nobody, do not come out. Don't, don't come in here with that energy. Sort your shit out out there and then you can come in. And we kind of make them move a little bit. We move their feet because when we move their feet, we're gaining their respect. And then once they've kind of calmed down a little bit, then we'll let them in our space. And the same thing can be done with humans. Granted, you can't make humans run around you in a circle, even though sometimes I would absolutely love to do that. You also can't chase after them with a whip. That's apparently frowned upon. <laughs> but if somebody's coming at you and their energy is like, way the heck, I gotta get small, it's way the heck up here, and you are just neutral, and you're like, don't come at me with that, you could say, hey, I see that you're feeling a type of way, you don't even have to label what it is they're feeling, like, if they're mad, clearly they're mad, but I see you're feeling a type of way, why don't you go stand over there and get yourself together before we have a conversation? Like, oh my gosh, again, mind blown it's awesome. It's pretty cool to be able to use my training with horses to also 
talk and work with people. So versatile. It's so awesome. Everybody should train horses. Well, not everybody. People should totally be more involved with horses so they can <laughs> work better with the human species. Though, horses are kind of... They're cooler. Sometimes they can be a little bit better. <laughs> Alright, friend. Thank you for going on that wild story ride with me. I hope you got some good insight in there. I have merch. Go check it out. I'll put the link in the description. HTF10 for 10% off at checkout. Do it. Thank you for the support. Thank you so much. And promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend. <laughs>